So my name is Glenn Swanton. I'm the Managing Director of Photodata and JD Photo Tools. Uh, started in Reprographic Photography in 1979 with the old artworks, Red and Blues, I'm sure some of you will remember, um, in a company called Allman Designs and we bought our first plotter in 1984. Uh, I joined Photodata in 89 where we uh, progressed into laser plotting and tried to grow the business there. Uh, we purchased JD Photo Tools in 2005 and then became the AGFA UK distributor for film in the UK in 2007. Uh, we now produce films for and supply films to the printed circuit board, chemical etching and specialised printing industries, as well as supplying glass photo masks to the biomedical, semiconductor and specialist plastic industries. And some of our high resolution plotters, which are 128,000 DPI, can plot line widths down to four microns on film and two microns on glass. So uh, if ever you want to try doing some really fine work, by all means, give us a shout. But my topic tonight is, uh, is precision film work and tooling. And the main part really is, is temperature and humidity. H is humidity controlled in the factory and maintaining accurate photo tools? I'm going to assume a few things. I'm going to assume that your plotter is regularly serviced and calibrated, your film processor is running to order, and then these three main things will make accurate photo tools achievable. The temperature and humidity control um, in your plotting room and all rooms where your films are going to be used is vital to its accuracy. And without proper control, your photo tool will become dimensionally unstable and will cause problems in manufacture. Couple that with the control of your film processor, means control of track widths. Sometimes we're looking at etching and all the rest of it. It may well be the actual uh, development in your, in your processor not quite right and, and you're losing a couple of thousand there. But also something that is sometimes overlooked is your unexposed film storage before it goes onto a plotter. Um, it's crucial. It needs to be acclimatised before it goes onto your plotter. If it's too cold and you're emptying a load of film into your plotter, then your film will be, be short. Uh, it needs to be acclimatised all the way through. And the same when you're archiving your photo tools. Keep it in the same sort of environment, if you can, that it's been produced in. This is, is probably the key to everything. The plotter room needs to be 21 degrees and the relative humidity should be 50%. That is the recommended uh, conditions set by ACFA and most, uh, if not all, film manufacturers. But with today's designs becoming more complex and with ever increasing demands on track widths, tight tracking gaps and tight registration, this rule has never been more important. Thousands of pounds are spent each year on maintenance and calibration of plotters, drill machines, optical alignment systems, punch systems, etc. All to make your machines work into the optimum accuracy. But in aid of tight registration, this is in, in aid of tight registration for your PCBs. But are we ignoring the simple rule as far as photo tools are concerned? With the photo tool being at the very beginning of the manufacturing process, we have the age-old fact that if the film is out, then the board will be out too. And on my travels around the country visiting many PCB shops, I found that most, if not all, plotting rooms do have air conditioning controlling the temperature of the room, but the same cannot be said for humidity. Once the plotter is set up, the engineer has been in, he's set it all up, it's all working, the processor is chugging away, it's very easy to forget the environment that the film is now being used in. So this is a structure of a piece of film, pretty boring stuff, but, it's, um, but it basically shows the main part there, the base is polyester, and um, it basically has a thin layer of gelatin on it, which absorbs both the polyester and the gelatin, absorbs moisture and heat from the environment that it's working in, as well as heat from light boxes and inspection, and even hotter uh, contact frames during exposure. So that's, that's the subsection, if you like, of a, of, a, of a piece of film, ideal line film, which um, most people use in the UK. 
Um, this little slide's courtesy of John Dingley, so I'll thank him for that. Um, basically, it's a, it's a simple biology lesson. Apologies to those present that are far more qualified than me on this subject, but uh, the colder it gets, the smaller it gets. And inversely, the warmer it is, the bigger it is. Uh, it's the same with humidity. The more water it absorbs, the more it swells and the size increases. And equally as it dries out, it shrinks. So if we have a dark room that has a high humidity, the film is longer than it should be. And once it's imaged and processed and taken to another place in the factory, the humidity may be lower there and therefore the film will shrink. You now have films that do not align and are drilled, uh, align to a drilled panel because they're too small or too big depending on the condition of your room. Now temperature has the same overall dimension effect as humidity. However, natural temperature fluctuations are much smaller than humidity fluctuations. Because it's rare that a room in a factory will be lower than 10 degrees over ambient temperature or more than 10 degrees above, this makes controlling um, temperature fairly easy. We would spot instantly if we walked into a room if it was 11 degrees. However, you can shift relative humidity 30 or 40 points in any direction, then you'd probably never know. So for instance, um, in fact I did uh, try to bring a, a, a temperature and humidity gauge in here today, but I would imagine this is something like sort of 25, 26 and about 70% in here. So your plot, if it was standing here, would be all over the place. So controlling humidity is much harder, and that's the one to concentrate on. Controlling wherever possible. Ironic, ironically, though, as stated before, most people do control their temperature, but it's the humidity that, that is the problem. I took this off the internet the other day, and this is, I hope everyone can see that, but basically that's uh, a map of the UK in, in, in current relative humidity. And as you can see, there's nowhere in the UK currently below 82%. Um, it's, so we're already fighting against it before, before we start. And if you're in Scotland, you've got a real problem. And if you couple this with the next slide, and our apologies for the, uh, the amount of information on there. It's not the best graphic in the world. But you can basically see from the shapes, the, uh, we look across the blue here on the first graph represents the minimum, thank you, Steve, um, the minimum the average minimum temperature, and the red is the average maximum temperature in Edinburgh, London and Plymouth. The graph on the other side is humidity. So you can see that they're both working against each other already. Um, and with the average maximum temperature being just above 20 in London, you can also see why we all fly elsewhere for our holidays. But that, that sort of shows really that uh, We've already got a bad starting point as far as keeping the film's concerned because it's, it's already working against the 21 degrees, 50%. So, what effect does it have on a piece of film? Uh, this dimensional stability calculator um, is basically a spreadsheet which I can, anyone that would be interested in this, we can, we can let have. But the top two is actually the preferred um, the reference temperature and the reference humidity, which is the uh, manufacturer's guideline. The film length uh, is what it is. I've, in this example, I've, I've used 400 millimetres. And then you just plug in the, the next two down, which is the actual room temperature and the actual hum the room humidity that your, uh, your piece of film would be in. Uh, the two bits down the bottom here shows that... Uh, temperature moves, uh, or the expansion coefficient is 18 microns per square metre per degree centigrade. That's how much it can move. And humidity, although slightly lower, at 14 microns per metre per percentage relative humidity. So this is an example for this presentation. Is uh, Again, you've got your set 2150, but the room temperature has gone up to 23 degrees and the relative humidity in there is 70. Now that's not unusual um, 
and could, could happen quite easily with a humidity or dehumidifier not working properly. Or again, if it, the room's not controlled at all, that's very easy to achieve. But this is the effect it has on your 400 millimetre length. It's grown by 102 microns, or four thou over 15 inches. So that's the sort of effect it can have if, if uncontrolled. So the next slide, again, if I can get to it. There you go. So there's a film, or I've simulated a film being plotted at 21 degrees and 50%, everything hunky-dory. It's lined up to its drilled panel and it's, the registration's absolutely perfect. Um, however, if we go back and the film plotted at 23 degrees at 70%, as, as uh, we stated on the calculator, you can see misregistration has already started. And I've actually, although it's probably quite difficult at the back to see, I've zoomed in if I can get this thing to work. There. That's the sort of misregistration you would see, uh, basically by just having a room that's 23 degrees and 70% instead of 2150. So you're really beginning to struggle to uh, manufacture because this is right at the very beginning. This is the plot that you're going to start life with. And you add that to all your... Uh, as, as a plotter, I plot films, I inspect them, I stick them in a bag and I send them to a the customer. You guys have to, have to use this and, and actually make a board. So you really are beginning to, to, to struggle to keep that if you get that sort of problem. So, maintaining accurate photo plots. The basic thing is to control the room that your film is stored in and that's prior to plotting. Control the plotter room that the photo plot is plotted in, which is, stands for itself. Control the room that the photo tool is inspected. So it will grow, as we've said, or it will in, in, the, in the cold and the, and the very uh, small humidity, it will shrink. Um, we are getting phone calls virtually every week saying, my plots are out, what's going on? And then we go down with our temperature and humidity gauge and we walk around and we say, well, there could be your problem. Yeah, we'll perform an audit, we'll go around, we'll, we'll check your, your processes, we'll check the rooms and just see what it's like. And we can record it, we can help and hopefully it makes for more accurate um, photo plots. So basically it's about getting the balance right, again, courtesy of John Dingley. Um, temperature and humidity do go hand in hand. Uh, if you do get that temperature, and I know it, I, I keep going on and on about it, the 2150, but if it's something that you can keep in your heads, you will get accurate photo plots because our plotters are very accurate. All the machines that we use are accurate. The film is, is as accurate as the temperature and humidity it works in. And that's pretty much it. I don't know whether that was a quick one or...